future because I will be saving these. Um, I hope you can hear everything okay. Please let me know uh, in the chat. And the whole point of these, I'm going to be doing this every Sunday for as long as I can. And it'll be a what I call a chat and, chat and carve in the same uh, world of a, a chat and chew, which is that kind of um, old diner experience where you just go somewhere, hang out, parcel out some ideas. Um, and so I'm just going to be chatting and, and carving, like the name suggests. So yeah, feel free to fire up any questions in the, in the chat uh, that you're curious about. But this is a piece of tree. It's got some, some checking on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it um, along the nicest curve that I can find. And then we'll just see what I can get out of this because like you can see, that's a pretty nasty check. That's going to be my handle section. I don't even like testing the, um, testing the waters when it comes to putting that stuff near the spoon bowl. Let's crack in. This is really dry. I can feel, I can feel by the way it's splitting on me. It's popping. But let's see if we can get something nice out of it. I'm using my um, wood tamers and farmer's forge, uh, 860 gram carver. All right. So I'll swing around this way so you can see what I'm doing. So the nice thing about um, dry cherry is that you get a really nice finish straight off the bat, which is, which is lovely. It means that I can carve this from start to finish without having to wait for it to dry. And I've gotten into the habit of always starting on the underside of the spoon. You don't have to. And I'm honestly not sure why I do. I think it's because the underside of the spoon, that swoop is often where you can create the most movement. Um, it's great to see you too. Um, yeah, I feel like once you get that bottom swoop, you can bring the top down to match it. And it's easier to do it that way, for me at least. Um, and honestly, that might change. That's the one thing that I love about carving. Is that you can change your process. There's so many different ways to do this. So you can start seeing where that checking is running. That's why, another reason why I start at the bottom. Um, so I can, I'll, I don't know if you can see that, yeah. So I'll basically cut back. I'll draw the pencil line. So yeah, there you go. You can see the line down there. I'm gonna cut about that much off it. So that'll be my, my eating spoon, basically. That's a good lesson. Don't try and catch a piece of work if it frees up. Because this is dry cherry, it might want to bite a little bit. And you always want to just let it go because if you try and catch it, you might get in the way of the axe, which is 
No good. Because it certainly happens from time to time. Okay. So there's our bottom shape, I'll do the top, um, I'll just do it with an axe. If you can see that alright, there we go. So there's my lowest crank point. And what I'll do is I'll just ax uh, down to that now. See, I've got a couple of couple of little pin knots in there. But those aren't going to get in the way. There's my top face roughed out, and then we'll just work in that section. I think you'll be able to see me okay from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, feel free to fire off any questions you might have. Thank you for being here. So that's the start of my rough blank. Um, I might just cut off that end and then do a little bit of drawing. Still just a little bit there. You can't, I don't know if you can see that, that little bit. So I'm going to cut back even more. That's more like it. So that's completely clean. So we're right back past the chips now. Um, does make it a little bit smaller than I'd like, but better to have a spoon at all because I might end up having to go back down to that spot anyway. This is the uh, Silky uh, Big Boy, highly recommended. Um, I also use the smaller Gone Boy which is really good. Um, let me know if you can hear me by the way, I'm using, still not too scratchy, I've got it sitting in here and my shirt's a little loose so I want to make sure that I'm not scratchy scratching all over the place. If I am, I can always just move the mic onto the stand. So let me know in the, in the chat if everything's sounding okay. Anyway, I'll try and draw this. So I'll do all this freehand. And make a nice little wide mouth eater.
And quite often what I'll do in this instance is I'll, I'll match the grain when I'm working uh, tangentially. So that means coming down from the bark as opposed to carving in along the bark or along the, uh, the grain, which is radial. And then just going to do a, a very simple little handle shape. Just doing a rough, rough mock-up, so this can all be changed as I go. And while I usually do this stuff with the axe, I might do it with the saw because this is really dry. So I want to be able to just kind of hit it nice and clean. Because the drier the wood gets, the, the um, more likely it is to uh, pop. Like, it'll, it'll kind of pop away. You'll see what I mean when I get to it. So, just cutting my, my stop cuts. Yeah, really dry. Might just cut off the top while I'm here. And then take off this as well. Okay, there we go. So ideally, I'll be able to just Pop these away pretty easily. We'll see if that works. Hopefully the grain doesn't want to throw me in a different direction, but we'll we'll see. There we go. The perfect example of that. And then I'll do the other side just while it's here. A little more stubborn, but same thing. So if that was green, I would more likely chip away, make some relief cuts. I can already tell that this is going to be really nice for knife finishing, but it's a little bit of a pain for axe work because it does stick just a little bit. makes it tricky to get into a groove. Okay. It's getting there. Now, I know that this was meant to be called a chat and carve, but um, I don't know. I guess, I guess I'll just keep carving, but feel free to let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I do also have another video coming out. Um, well, I mean, I've got them coming out every week, so I've got some more stuff coming out. Um, very soon, one of them's on uh, Tooker cams voice is much louder when you look down. Ah, so that makes sense. How about, let me just adjust this. It's pretty, it's pretty quiet out here right now. So this might be too quiet, but I'm just gonna put the, cat, the, um, the microphone over there. 
and we'll see if that keeps things nice and even for you. Um, but thank you for letting me know. That's awesome. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, I have a video coming up probably on Friday, next Friday, um, all about uh, Tooker cams. Too low, too quiet, okay. Well, we might have to just deal with this. This might have to be it. So it might just get a little bit louder when I'm looking down and a little quieter when I look up at the camera, but way too quiet now, Andy. Okay, better before. All right, let's stick with this then. Thank you for letting me know. Hopefully this works. Now it's better, awesome, okay. Noted. Um, yeah, I've got a video on uh, Tooker cams coming out on Friday, which, you know, I think is really helpful because it can be a bit of a intimidating tool. Okay. So that's a good little, um, that's a good little tip. I don't know if I'll be able to angle this. Let me see if I can angle the, the camera in a way that will show you what I just did then. Let me angle this down. So essentially what I did there is I had my, my tab and I basically made it so that the ax was burying into the block and I put the end of the spoon at a place where the, uh, the back of the shoulder, this section here, um, isn't in the way of the axe because that's when you can really ruin a spoon. So this way I can, I can basically swing straight in to the block. I'll do a better job of filming this at some point so that you can see it all better. But anyway. It's a good way, you want to make sure you don't go through the back of that shoulder because that's a, that can be a real deal breaker. Um, almost done axing this out. And then I might switch over to the draw knife. And we'll, have a, we'll have a finished spoon in a little bit, for sure. Provided that knot doesn't get in my way, which it might. But we might be able to just build around that, so that's all good. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. I think anything else, anything else can be dealt with in the uh, draw knife. So let's do it. Let's switch this over. I've got all my tools over here. Let's just make sure you can see what's going on. There we go. Okay, I hope you can see this. That's pretty, yeah, maybe I'll bring it a little bit closer if I can. There we go. All right. I'm gonna use my, um, my Magnus Sunderlin uh, draw knife. Can you see? A little one works really well for especially for this style you can use the larger ones for sure nothing wrong with that I'm just gonna shuffle this in just a bit so you can see everything there we go um, I also have a video on how to build a spoon mule
I love these. I love these tools. I think they're just a wonderful, wonderful invention. Just gives you the ability to kind of, it's that middle ground, right? Between a draw knife, a, a, uh, an ax and a, a slide knife. Where you're able to take big cuts without stressing your hands out, which I'm a big fan of. The main reason I like a draw knife, to be honest, is to do the um, the underside of the spoon. I find that's usually a spot that uh, kind of takes it out of me when it comes to my hands. And just refining the edges. I find it's a, it's a nice way to keep nice long square cuts. Okay, almost there. close then I'll just do the uh, like I said the, the back of the bowl right here to know where you guys are all based guys and gals and others I would love to know where where everyone's tuning in from um, I'm in the Blue Mountains here in Australia just a stone's throw from the National Park and it's about 456 on a Sunday I'd love to know where you're all where you're all hailing from right now. Okay. So I'm starting to feel pretty good about that. Oh, it looks like I've lost the chat. Um, sorry, let me see if I can get it back. Oh, there we go. Oh, right on. Taiwan, South Island of New Zealand, Florida. That's amazing. The internet is an amazing place. Here I am hanging out in the Blue Mountains carving a spoon. <laughs> and you're all hanging out with me. Thank you so much for being here. It blows my mind. It's very cool, makes me very happy. So I don't always do this step, I'm, I'm leveling out the top. Um, and I'm just doing that because I wanna just make sure that I'm redrawing my design um, as cleanly as I can. I keep this little piece of wood here so that I can stick it under the, under the spoon and then that way um, it gives me the ability to kind of clamp down but without cutting into the jaws. It still makes it quite tight to be honest. Almost there.
Taiwan, Florida, New Zealand. That is a mixed bag. That is really cool. Okay, we are on the home stretch of that. We nearly have a spoon. 25 minutes in, that's not bad. Um, just gonna bring down, I'm just basically making sure that this level looks good. It's a preferred wood for spoons. Super, super good question. Um, I would say I really love carving cherry. For this reason, it takes a really smooth finish straight away. I really enjoy carving birch because it's easier on the hands. Lately, I've been carving something called uh, silky oak, which is um, it's not part of the oak family. It's not a, a Quercus um, tree. It is a, an Australian native species, um, uh, Grevillea robusta, I think is the name. Um, and it's really nice. It's got like a waxiness to it that's really nice to, to deal with. Anyway, so there's pretty much a nearly formed blank. Um, I'm just gonna spin the, spin the camera back around just to here. And I'm just gonna do a very, very quick bit of ads work just to make my life easy. Tiny, tiny bit. So because this is quite a wide radius, I don't really want to do much. I just want to break up the fibers. Just a little bit. This is a very unnecessary step to be fair. Um, you could just go at this with the hook knife, um, but because I have the ads, uh, it just breaks that top fiber, which just makes life a little bit easier in the long run. Um, let's do a little bit of hollowing out. And then we're all done. And then I'll redraw the design. So there it is. Where are we at? 20, 28 minutes. bring you in over here if I can right here okay and then I think that's pretty good so I'm just gonna reset my design for my spoon so, take my pencil back out I hope you can see that here I'll do it over here find my center line again which is always a little funky you can use a compass or a a ruler for this. Sometimes I'd definitely recommend it. Sometimes the grain can be moving in different directions and it can kind of throw your eye out. So there's nothing wrong with, with picking up a compass and making sure things look right. But I'm pretty happy with this, I think. Yeah, that looks good. There's my bowl. Pretty good. And then, oh, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything, sorry. Yeah, we're good. And then I'll just do the handle, quick handle design. Nothing, nothing fancy. Just built to, built to work. Built to last. Um, I do also still have some spoons for sale in the in the shop, if you're interested. Um, no guarantees that they'll make it in time for Christmas, to be to be quite honest. But you could just let somebody know. I'll tell you what: if you buy one and it doesn't make it in time for Christmas, let me know, uh, 
and I will send a video, a little thank you to the person that you bought it for uh, on me. Uh, Woodlands Carve & Co. This is, a, I think, Paprika Knives is their company, Fennec. I tend to keep this one in my um, in my tool bag as just kind of a, a quick task knife. It's a great knife. It really is. Okay, so we'll just tidy up these lines. That's looking pretty good. And get that handle shape keyed in. You can see starting to work around the edges. I'm trying to get into YouTube. Any any tips for YouTube? Oh goodness, no. <laughs> I have I have no idea. I just I just carve spoons, man. Um, goodness, I'm not the person to, I'm not the person to ask, to be honest. Love what you do. That's my tip. And keep doing it. That would be, that would be my tip. Just keep doing what you're doing. And if you love it, it's not that hard to do. I truly, truly love carving spoons. <laughs> it's a crazy thing. It really is a crazy thing. But um, even if I wasn't filming these, I would still be out here carving spoons. So find the thing that you would do no matter what, no matter how many people are watching. And then hopefully you can build a community around that. All right, we're getting pretty close to matching out this top view. I think some people call it a plain view. Getting pretty close. So there's my rough set. And then I think what I'll do now is just take these edges off. Take all the kind of 45s. Starting from, I always like to start from my um, opposing side. I feel like I have the most control, and so it gives me the cleanest, uh, cleanest place to start, and then I can match this line afterwards. So there's, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see this is the, the drawn line and then I've basically taken this off at a 45 and dropped it down. And then what I'll do is I'll follow that on the other side. Um, you can do it two ways. You can cut around like this. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that just because it, it's an easier way to, to see it. Sometimes I can hold the spoon like this and, and twist, twist around, if that makes sense. Safety is key. Whatever feels the safest. I have a lot of people asking me about, especially because I do a lot of these cuts that seem like they're, they're really close to my body. Um, and I talk about this cut all the time, the pull cut. Um, I'll get back to it in just a second. This cut. And what I'm doing is I'm essentially just closing my fists. I'm not pulling everything back towards me. Even when I'm doing the long cuts, this is quite a small spoon, but even when I'm doing the long cuts, I'm more pulling myself into, into tightness. I'm tightening everything up. Um, I hope that makes sense. So I'm, I'm not, my elbows aren't up in the air and I'm not, you know, moving around all over the place. It's, uh, it's nice and nice and tight. Just for example, well, let me just level this spot out and I'll show you exactly what I mean.
So on the handle right here, let's see if I can bring this even closer. So on the handle right here, basically all I'm doing is I'm getting my knife buried in, working at a 45, and then closing this finger together and then pulling this one into, into close. So I'm, I'm really doing what I can to not drag the knife. Honestly, these fingers are doing a lot more of the force than, than this arm. My knife hand is more guiding. It's the rudder, as I like to say. And I'm just, just working on creating a little swoop. And I'll switch over and try and match that swoop if I can. Don't always get it the first go. Oh, that's pretty good though. So you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. So that's there and that's there. You can kind of see it's opening out. And I basically do the same thing right down the middle. That's a bit too much. I'm coming into that knot so things are getting a little tight. There we go. So this is quite a, a thin spoon now, but I think it's going to be plenty strong enough because Cherry can put up with a fair bit of flex and motion. Okay, I don't know if you can see that all right. So this top section's looking pretty, pretty interesting. Might just outline that a little more. So that looks really thin right now, but I'm going to bring this bottom section uh, back up, if that makes sense. I might move this back just a bit so that I'm not right up in your face. All right, so let's peel this shoulder back in. And pull the handle back up. I hope you can see that all right. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, let's bring this in just a bit. I think I got a little carried away with this handle, to be honest. A little too much swoop. But I think we'll be able to even it out. Maybe I'll make it a little rounder. Um, will you make videos in some decorative finish? Um, I, I certainly could. Um, I, I assume what you mean by that is kind of the, the chip carving and, and coal rosing and things like that. Um, I certainly could. I could do some chip carving. I will be the first uh, to admit that there are many other spoon carvers that do much more decorative spoons than me. 
that is certainly not where my strength lies. I am a, I carve functional spoons where food isn't gonna get caught in them, <laughs> which I find chips can, not all the time. Um, and to be honest, I think it's just a world that I'm yet to dive fully into, which I would love to, I'd love to dive into. Um, what am I making? Well, if you stick around, you might just see. Okay, I'm starting to feel better about this handle now. And I have been putting a fair bit of focus on this handle at this point, which is okay, but I think I need to balance out the, uh, the rest of the spoon now. Oop, I gave away what I'm carving. The giveaway is in my name. Andy Spoons. Col roasting is interesting. It, it really is. Um, there are a few people that I would recommend. One, Liesl Chapman. Uh, her Instagram is uh, Riv Chica Warrior. She's based out of the Midwest. And she does truly astonishing col roasting. Really, really beautiful stuff. I would definitely recommend checking that out. She very much paints onto the wood, which is really, really inspiring. I think coming from a woodworking before a um, painting background is probably why I don't do as much of that style of finishing. I wouldn't call myself, I wouldn't call myself an artist. I would, I'd say I'm a craft person first before an artist. A little distinction, I guess. Um, okay, starting to pull this in nicely. I think I might just do a little detail on the neck because like I said, this is quite a, a small spoon. Give it something just to separate the handle from the bowl. Okay, now let's get on to some of the bowl carving. My pleasure. So you can see my handle is pretty refined. It's got a little bit of work to do up on the back, but the bowl is completely roughed. You know, there's nothing going on on that right now. So need to need to figure that out so let's do that now oh. and i am just going to use the big knife um, because it's all i have on hand right now it's the took a cam i'm going to do a video on this like i said um, at the end of next week I would say if you're just getting into spoon carving, this is a bit overkill. You don't need a tooker cam straight away. Much more of a production style carving knife. Almost done. And then I'll probably come back through with a smaller knife and do a little bit of finishing on this. 
refuse to eat cereal. You should. Buy it and eat cereal. Andyspoons.com for all your cereal spoon eating needs. I think this tool is becoming a little bit unwieldy for this. A little much. Almost done that. This is from um, Belzebu Crafts. You can get it on the website. You sure can. You can get it on the website. Um, Belzebu Crafts. Miguel makes wonderful tools. I highly recommend them. Highly, highly, highly. Okay. Getting into the home stretch now, where I think I might leave a little meat on the bones so that I can uh, so that I can smooth everything out. It would be nice if I sold um, recommended tools, but you know what? That's a bit of an undertaking. I'm not going to lie, because that involves quite a lot of investment um, and also there are some really great tool distributors in Australia and honestly more often than not it's it's much easier to just you know watch all of my videos check out the tools that I recommend of which I, I post about quite a lot um, if you check my recent frequently asked video covers all of that. Um, and then because w everyone's in different places in the world, um, it's often easier to just buy them in your in your area. Because shipping from Australia to all over the place turns into quite an expensive undertaking especially for tools because they're heavy. Spoons are easier. Okay. So like I said, because this, this is getting a bit big, I would usually use a smaller knife to finish the bowl, which I will. So I'll save that for later. And then I'll just do a little bit of refining with a straight knife, with a slide knife. before signing off. I hope everyone's having a wonderful Saturday, Sunday, it's Sunday here. It's Sunday here, but I'm, I'm assuming that I'm speaking to some people still in, in the past. Saturday is still happening. For all of you in yesterday, the future is great. 
future is bright. Stick around. Okay. So like I said, I'm not going to do too much more refining on the back here because I still want to go back through, smooth out the bowl. I just want to just even a few edges out to make my life easier for later. And how am I looking for time? 51. Let's get this. Let's get this finished up in under an hour then. I think that's very doable. Just want to neaten this up a little bit. And then I think I still want to tighten up the handle just a bit. I just want to tighten up those spots. Here we go. And then this one. So like I said, it's a little spoon. It's a mini guy. But because it's made out of cherry, it's so strong. I'm not worried about, so that looks really thin, but I'm not worried about that at all. That's, um, it's really solid. We'll just do a final little pass around this corner. And then what I would often do, or what I will do, is I go back through that, um, a kind of 45 degree angle and just uh, what people call a micro chamfer. I just do a little tiny edge off everything. Because hard edges are where things chip. That's where all the chipping happens. So you want to make sure that even the nice sharp lines, they look cool. That's where things are going to chip. So it is nice to get rid of those where you can. So I'm just going back through and taking out some of those sharp edges. All top here. Uh, and I'll just run this edge all the way around the bowl. There. Let's, go. Let's tighten up a few things, and this is where you can really just putter around for a long time. There's a time when you just need to tell yourself that you're done. Which is very close. Very, very close. I might try and get a little more done with the Tooker Cam. It's quite a big tool, but there's a joke in there. Let's just snug in this handle, make it look nice and uniform. There we go. It's amazing what just a little tiny adjustment 
on the handle tender to the shape of something like this. It's a tricky thing about spoons is there's as many curves as you want there to be, but they all need to work in harmony. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. But it's all connected, all of these design choices. You're working out balance and you're trying to figure out, you know, where where everything meets and doesn't meet and separation and all that kind of stuff. So that's really close. And it gets trickier the smaller the spoon because all of those spots that you're staring at are really close together, whereas on a cooking spoon, you've got a little bit more leeway to be able to move around a bit. 56 minutes, oh my goodness. Running against the clock. Let's just do a couple more turns with the Toka Cam and then... Okay, almost there. These are much smaller cuts than I would usually do with a knife this size. But it is kind of working. Need to, need to make sure that I've got the right light. That's the tricky part, because you want to cut in just, just at the right angle. And bad lighting can really throw off your eye. Okay, let's just clean up that corner. And this might be a little tricky to do. With the big knife. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. All that done for the moment. Right, well, ah, amazing. So there we go. It's a little cherry spoon. This one's quite a simple eater, but uh, it would work. Like mentioned, it's great for cereal. And then what I would end up doing is going back through this and just making sure that it's all neat and tidy. Add some oil finish to it. Obviously, I just put it in my mouth, so I'm going to carve that away. <laughs> and then put some curing oil on there so it's all sealed up. Um, and that is... Oh, and that is that. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, feel free to check out andyspoons.com. Um, Oh, that's so cool that you were watching while you're cooking dinner. That's great to hear. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And like I said, I'm going to be doing these chat and carbs um, every Sunday afternoon as m many times as I can. If I don't do it, I'll, I'll post again it, again uh, talking about that. But um, yeah, I'm going to be doing this every Sunday so that you can kind of tune in and let me know. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, jump over to andyspoons.com and pick up a shirt or a spoon or anything like that. And uh, I will talk to you all again very soon. All the best. Bye.